Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I'm going to give you my top five tips for getting started in SketchUp. So I know that sounds very basic, right? That sounds back to the beginning. Uh, when I say getting started in SketchUp, it's like you don't know anything about SketchUp kind of thing. But the issue with SketchUp, issue, it makes it sound way worse than it is. But the thing we see a lot with people who use SketchUp is their self-talk. They teach themselves using videos like this. Uh, they just pick it up and poke around. Um, and a lot of people, because it is such a simple to use interface, are good. They, they learn what they need to do that way and it's great. But a lot of people skip over some fundamental things that maybe aren't immediately apparent in SketchUp. And that's what I want to do is I want to take a look at five things that you should know about SketchUp when you get going. And if you've already been using SketchUp, this is a short video, might be worth watching just to see if there's anything new you can glean to make yourself even better. So let's hop in. All right, first things first, uh, SketchUp is 3D. SketchUp is always 3D. People ask all the time, how do I get into 2D mode? There is no 2D mode. There's not quadrants that show different views. You're always in 3D. So even if I do something like I go to my camera, do a standard view and say top view. So now I'm looking down and I'll take that even a little further and I'll go to camera and turn to parallel projection. Now I'm looking straight down and there's no, you know, projection or, 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 or uh, change for parallel or anything like that. I'm still in 3D. So I might be looking straight down, but if I come here and I go like this, I draw a click, draw a line there, a line to here, looks like a flat line, but if I look in 3D space, yep, that line went from the ground up to the top of that box. So just an important thing to note, you don't have to do anything to keep it in 3D. I like, I so I just switch from parallel to perspective because I like the look of perspective. It's easier for me to navigate in perspective. I like that vanishing point. You don't have to do that. If you like parallel, that's fine. But there's nothing you have to do to get into 3D. There is no 2D mode. Uh, SketchUp is always in 3D. So that's that's an important note. Some people do come in and they try to figure out how do I drop flat to draw something flat. If you do want to draw something flat, you can absolutely do that, of course. My recommendation would be to grab a surface of some, some sort. I use a rectangle. And then you can come in here and as you start drawing, just make sure your cursor stays as that little, see the little blue diamond shape? That's the on face uh, icon. If I come off here, it goes away. If I come on here, see that? So as long as I keep an eye on that icon and I know I'm snapping to that blue uh, diamond, then I know I'm saying I'm faced, I'm drawing in 2D. So that's an important thing. If you do have a lot of 2D work, you have to do. All right, next thing I want to mention is that SketchUp is a surface modeler. What does that mean? Well, SketchUp draws two things. This is boiling it down for you guys. SketchUp draws edges, which is what I can create with a line tool. That's an edge. And it creates surfaces. Surfaces are created by connecting three or more edges in 3D space. So as soon as I do that, I now have a face. This is a face right here. That's my face, edge, face. That's all SketchUp creates. Now there's a lot of things you can do with that, of course. We have these tools up here are, are all created to create varying geometry, but really it all comes down to modifications or, or, or creating a series of edges and faces. So that's what it does. I point this out because some tools out there modeling 3D are, are 3D modelers, are solid modelers. So they'll actually, from the beginning, create something and, and have it be a solid piece. SketchUp never actually has a solid piece. So if I take, if I take this little triangle I just drew and I use push-pull to pull it up in a 3D space, all right, so if I spin around it, it looks like it is, you know, for all intents and purposes, a solid. And we would consider it a solid if it were grouped together. But the fact is, if I grab one face and delete it, I'll see inside and see that it is in fact hollow. So these shapes, I, I threw some shapes on the screen here to look at as we were moving around. If I flip underneath, you can see that this pyramid doesn't have a bottom face. So it's, you can see how hollow it is. If I draw a new edge right here, it'll close the bottom, but this is still just a collection of five faces. So it's never really going to close up like a solid. So it's just, it's just, it's a different way. We can still use solid tools. There's ways to make these be solid or look 
uh, uh, be seen by this software as solid, but it's not a solid modeler. So it does not initially create solids. It does create surfaces. If I take one of these closed shapes and I want to make it a solid, I can do that by grouping. Grouping is my next tip. As you're modeling, you start to create something. Once you have it as a thing, or you want to separate this geometry from other geometry, or you want to make it a solid, select the geometry and click Make Group. If I hop over here into Entity Info, I'll see it calls it a solid group. So if I go group select this triangle, or let's, let's grab this cylinder I made right here, it's going to show a bunch of entities. So it's showing all the edges and faces that are used to make this geometry. Whereas over here, I have one thing that is a solid group. So even though this geometry all connects together and forms a solid shape, it's not considered a solid until I right click and I say make group. Now at this point, I have a solid shape. The other, so this is nice because if I want to do something like move this, I can move it all together. Whereas if I come over here and grab this and I move it, I'm going to start stretching geometry. Uh, the other thing, if I do grab all of this and I bring it over here and we connect it right up against this face right here, because of the way SketchUp does its surface modeling thing, as soon as edges touch faces or edges touch edges, they combine. So as soon as I did that, sticky geometry is what we call it, connects it together, and now that is one hunk of geometry all connected together. So I'm just going to undo to get that separate. So grouping is incredibly important. This just makes it easier to move stuff around. So if I want to put this on top like that, I can do that. And it doesn't join because it's a separate group. It also gives me the ability to work with solid tools and organize these pieces. So once this goes into a group, if I look at it in like outline or something, I'm going to see that it is in a group as opposed to a bunch of loose geometry. So grouping is extremely important in SketchUp. So I do recommend once you start modeling, you get to the point where you've kind of got your geometry, initial geometry together, select it and make a group. I say anytime you finish a thing, make sure it is a group. All right, that's three things down. Let's look, let's talk about two more things that are very important SketchUp. So this one is not something that presents itself immediately. So if I grab this, I'm gonna, I just click on it once to select. I'm gonna hit move. Now say I wanna move this. So this corner is lined up right with this corner. Once I click on it, I have an option here. I can hold down my mouse button, which I'm doing right now, and move it to where I want. If at any point I let go of my mouse button, it's gonna go to that point. That's not ideal. So one of the things I recommend is click and release. So my finger is up off of the mouse button right now. I just click once and bring my finger back up. Now I don't have to worry about accidentally letting go of the mouse button or something like that. It's not going to place where it's, or it's not going to go to its final place until I double or I click completely again. So click and release, click and release, click and release, click and release. So your finger should only be tapping the mouse button briefly, never holding it down. This is the same for drawing. So if I come in here and I pick an edge right here, I pick and release. So I just tap the mouse button. Now when I get to the point where I want to move it to, tap and release. This makes it so much, so much easier than trying to hold down the mouse button as you move, um, accidentally letting go of the mouse button is a pain in the butt. Everybody does that at some point. It's frustrating. With this, I don't have to worry about it. And if I ever want to stop, I just tap the escape key. So click, move, click is what we call at move. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend getting used to doing that because drawing by dragging is not a good thing. All right, speaking of drawing or moving or really anything here, if I click in here and start to draw, if you look down here, see, see this little, little field right here? This is the measurements box. So as I move my cursor, it's gonna show me I'm drawing this of a certain length. I can, if I'm really, really careful, maybe, say I want this to be four feet, I might be able to find close to four. See a little squiggle in front of the four right there? That's telling me that I'm at about four, but not exactly four. So if I zoom in, there's a possibility that I scoot my mouse around a lot, I'll eventually hit exactly four. But it's probably not gonna be, not gonna, I'm, it's, it's a lot of work and I don't wanna do it. It's not worth doing. What you can do instead is at any point as you're drawing or moving or using any command, I can just type in the length I want. So notice I don't come down here and click in this box. You never have to click in this box. 
If it's available, just typing right now, I'm just gonna type four foot and hit enter, gives me a line that's exactly four foot. Same with moving. So if I come out here and I go to move, um, and I grab this right here, if I wanna move it forward two feet, again, I can slowly slide, try to get to two feet, or just start sliding the direction. I'm on the green axis, type two foot, hit enter. The big thing about this, people get hung up on this all the time, is they try to click down here. This is not uh, something you have to click into. In fact, I'd say that most of the time you click in here, it's gonna end up causing issues for you. So uh, just don't click in there, just don't do it. So if I move this three foot, I just type three foot and see it shows up down there and I hit enter. I don't ever have to come click down here. That's a big one that people get stuck on that and they, they, they trip up on that and it's, it's, uh, it's pretty frustrating. So don't click in there. So run through that one more time. You are always in 3D space. SketchUp is a surface modeler, not a solid modeler. When you do get your geometry to a point you wanna keep it by itself, grouping is essential. Use grouping. If you start to draw or move, click release, move, click release, tap the mouse button, don't hold it. Click, move, click. And then of course, the last thing, measurements box, don't click in the measurements box, just type. There you go. I think that those are six things that uh, anybody who's really spent their time in SketchUp knows about. But once you start running SketchUp, it doesn't necessarily tell you that. It doesn't pop out and say, hey, this is what's going on. But good information all around. So um, yeah, try that out. If, if you're like, so if you're new to SketchUp, hopefully those help you out. If you've been using SketchUp for a while, I'd be interested to hear if there's any of those things that you trip up on still, like click, move, click. Some people go, oh no, I always click and drag. You can make that work, but it's definitely easier starting from scratch if you get in the habit of clicking and releasing. Um, but yeah, maybe I missed one too. Uh, if so, let me know. What, what's what's the sixth tip I should have gotten there? Uh, if you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. More importantly than that though, let us know if you have an idea that you think would make a good video, if you have uh, a, another tip, something that I didn't touch on here that you wanna make sure everybody hears, let us know that down in the comment. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more unless you want something you wanna see. Thank you.